Hello everyone and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host Meredith Dykstra and we have our resident cellular healing specialist Dr. Daniel Pampa on the line of course and today we have special guest Dr. Michael Kessler joining the show and we're going to be talking all about HRV or heart rate variability. So really exciting topic today. Before we get started let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Kessler. So Michael Kessler, DCCCSP, has 25 years clinical experience with a primary focus on nutritional and energetic therapies and is highly experienced in the integration of advanced healing methods, systems, and devices. Dr. Kessler is the author of four books for Lombardi Press, The Eight-Day Detox Breakthrough, The New Medicine Cure, Doctor's Home Remedies That Work, and New Breakthroughs in Natural Pain Healing. He also wrote articles for a monthly basis for several years for a health, le health newsletter for Lombardi. Dr. Kessler has taught numerous workshops on a variety of topics for Designs for Health, as well as biotics research, nutri energetics systems, and has lectured for the Academy of Complementary and Integrative Medicine. He now teaches individual practitioners how they can integrate a variety of modalities into their practices to help localize the core imbalances that are contributing to their patients' health problems. So thank you, Dr. Kessler, for joining Cellular Healing TV, and welcome to the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. i, I got to say that I've done a lot of training also with Dr. Pompa, and uh, he's one of my mentors, and I've learned a great deal from, uh, from what you're doing. In fact, I'm on a ketogenic diet, and I am doing intermittent fasting, and it does yeah. improve heart rate variability. Yeah, no, that's right. You know, Michael, I thank you, uh, Dr. Mike, for being on the show, and, uh, you know, yeah, you followed, um, you know, my work for quite some time, and I'm fascinated by your work, honestly, and, you know, this is something that uh, many of my doctors, most of my doctors uh, and many others around the country watch, uh, you know, this program, for sure. And I want those doctors watching us to have access to this uh, technology. So we'll make sure that we provide a way, <clears throat> you know, for that. Because I believe this technology um, is really advanced from where heart rate var variability was. And again, I, I think you know you're going to give an explanation of that because, but you know where it is now in this goes far beyond even what I would consider heart rate variability. I was introduced to it years ago, and, and again, it, it had amazing benefits uh, even back then. But today, this, what you're doing, this work, is the most cutting edge. And, you know, and I, I want every one of our clinics to have this uh, in it. And they're going to, right? I mean, more and more yeah, of our clinics, yeah, their more and more of the cellular healing clinics are bringing in this type of work. So, um, you know, obviously they can... Uh, you know, people watching to say, I want that, you know, we can, you know, try to hook you up with a, uh, one of our doctors that has it. But, Michael, I know you put together some PowerPoints uh, for people to understand this technology. And um, I, I'm just going to turn it over to you. And, again, I, I may have some questions, you know, in between that that I think that, you know, our viewers are uh, asking or thinking. Um, so I might slow you down there, but I don't want to slow you down too much. So, with that said, uh, Dr. Michael, thank you again, and I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to you to That's explain scary. this technology. <laughs> no. no, go ahead. That's perfect, and I'll I'll give an explanation. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to pull it up. Make sure that you guys can can see my screen here. So one second here. And for those of you who are just on iTunes listening, I definitely suggest you go to YouTube and check out the uh, the visual, the, the video of this so you can actually see the PowerPoint because this is just um, really awesome information to, to be able to see. So the screen share right now. And alrighty. So can you guys see the screen now? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. We good? Perfect. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, the, the, the way I got involved in this is I was at a conference, I was a conference junkie, and I ran into this guy, uh, Dr. Javdat Karamov, who uh, Dr. Pompa knows, and he's an MD from Russia, and he's also an NMD here in Portland, Oregon, and he showed me this great heart rate variability system. This You're talking, I don't know how many years ago, I'm here with my wife, Dr. Bichetti, about five, ten years ago, more like ten. And I go, God, this is incredible. You know, this is kind of something I was looking at. I was kind of one of those techno junkies. They had a lot of technology in my clinic, 
but I could see that this was a technology that would allow me to be able to track my patients. And, you know, most of us uh, are using, uh, you know, exercise and targeted nutrition and, and lifestyle programs, but to be able to look globally at how all the regulatory systems, central nervous system, autonomic nervous system, and even the, the Chinese system from Chinese medicine and looking at how all these interrelate and being able to see that the patient is going in the right direction on many of these different um, indices was amazing to me. I was, so I was excited for myself to have one of these technologies. And then from then on, we've been teaching it and launching it in, in uh, practitioners' offices. And I think this is uh, what we really need to have in our offices to be able to track people's health and show them visually. Really, you know, it's, it's not just a, a lot of toys, a lot of these technologies, especially heart rate variability. You look at heart rate variability and it's boring. It's boring for the patient. It's a bunch of lines and numbers. This one is just, uh, it's a beauty. It's just uh, incredibly, every picture on this thing tells a story. Yeah. So with that said, uh, Let's go to the next slide and, and go from there. I, I don't know what's on the next slide, but we'll see. What do we got on there? Because I, I don't have anything on my screen. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we're jumping around. Let me tell you a, a story. There's a group in Palo Alto, and it's called the Longevity Study. It's a million-dollar prize. And in that, in that um, uh, you know, competition, you got the top people in the world competing for in this longevity study. And you know what they're using as their uh, biomarker? Take a guess. Yeah. <laughs> Heart rate variability. <laughs> right. Here it is, Dr. June Young. And the reason is he's saying as we age, we lose our flexibility. Because the heart rate mm -hmm. variability is going to be looking at how we adapt to stress. And all the different systems in our body work within a very specific parameter. And as we get older, you know, maybe our blood pressure goes up, but maybe it comes back to normal, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe our TH1 to TH2 ratio, or as far as our immune system, could dance back and forth, but all of a sudden it doesn't do that anymore. We lose that capacity, that adaptive capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's part of this study, is what they're looking at. And I know you've been talking about adaptive uh, systems. Uh, yeah. especially with, with the dietary things that you've been talking about. It's all systems. All systems have to be flexible and dance back and forth within a very specific range. Right. We can't do that anymore if we age. We have disease. And that's kind of what we're looking at. And that's why they're using heart rate variability um, to, as their biomarker. So let's talk about what is heart rate variability because that's <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at the slide here when it comes up. I don't I don't have it in front of me, but uh, what do we got? Okay, so that would probably be the, another slide. The next slide. Can we show the the next slide? Do you see it? Yeah, you know it's kind of um, it's not going in the right order, but I can tell you the next slide is probably where did this stuff come from that we're using and why is it different than anything else out there because our technology really came from Russia. And it, our heart rate variability system is more than a heart rate variability system. It's more of a, a total uh, wellness evaluation program and, and, it, and with heart rate variability. And it came uh, from Russia in about 1968. And you know what they were doing? They were tracking, using it to track the Submariners during World War II, during the Cold War. They wanted to see how well they can adapt stress in those tin cans and they would send this signal back to the surface and the and, and the scientists that worked on this were it wasn't just one scientist it was many scientists and a lot of them were mathematicians and they were looking at these patterns in the QRST of the EKG and from that the, a lot of the um, mathematical algorithms were able to give us information about other regulatory systems very sophisticated uh, technology. And from then on, it expanded and it kept growing. So the Russians are way ahead of us with this technology, although yeah. we've been expanding it in, in other ways, because as you know, Dr. Kerman. And so what we're looking at, let me show you a picture. Let's go to the next picture if we can. 
If you can go back up, it kind of explains that it says HRV may be the best biomarker to living long and increasing longevity. Yeah, and that's from the study. That's from the Palo Alto uh, project. And this is what okay. they were saying. That's not me saying it, but that's them saying it. Hey, Michael, uh, what, Dr. Michael, why don't you, uh, if you pull it up on your own computer, then um, you could at least you could see the slides. Um, I can see them. I'm, well, when I'm talking, I can see them. So when you're talking, I'm not sure why you can't see them. Uh, Meredith? They're little. They're just it's a little thing there. Yeah, but when you speak, it should blow up to your screen. All right, now it's better. Okay, I can see that. I don't know if I can control that, but there it is. So when I look here, and you see this, this little screen here, it says physical, emotional, toxicity. Um, actually, before I get to that, let me just explain. Here you see the health potential here, and down below you see recycling. So from your optimal health potential, all the way down to recycling and death, where is our patient in that continuum at any time? So the heart rate variability system that we have, Pulse Heart Quest, will tell you where that patient is. And so this is a little separate. I had to take a deviation because it's hard for me to stay completely on track, but it says your physical, emotional, and toxicity. And you see this sumo wrestler here. Just this guy is going to take a take a beating, and he's uh, on the uh, lower side there. This big guy is going to fall on him and crush him, and that represents the physical, emotional, and toxicity load on the body. And when those stressors are greater than our body's ability to adapt, this is something I use with my patients, and they can't adapt anymore. They end up with what? signs and symptoms. And if they don't address these heavyweights up here, physical, emotional, toxicity, what's going to happen? Degeneration is going to ensue. Right? And what do most people do when that happens? What do they do? They take pharmaceuticals and they turn off the signals because they don't want to feel bad with these signs and symptoms. And mm -hmm. then they have more symptoms and they take more drugs and they go down this spiral in the wrong direction. And with the heart rate variability, we can see that spiral as well. And we can see again when we start to reverse that and bring people up the opposite way as we make those lifestyle changes that we're talking about. So what is heart rate variability? Let me see if I can move that up a little bit. Move it up right there. Perfect. So when we're measuring heart rate variability, what are we measuring? We're measuring an EKG. And we're getting these little R waves. And these little R waves here are... Um, the, the systolic peaks of the heart, when the heart contracts. And what we want to see between one contraction and the next, we measure the time. And we want to see variability in those times between those 300 R to R waves. Because that tells us we have a very robust autonomic nervous system. And we can't be healthy without a healthy autonomic nervous system. Why? Because that's the nervous system autonomic, automatic, that controls all our systems of our body, all the organs of our body, and it's made up of two branches. The sympathetic, which most of you know about, that's fight or flight, and the other one that calms everything down, the parasympathetic nervous system. And we're able to, this, looking at heart rate variability, gives us a window into looking at this nervous system that, to be healthy, has to function to regulate our body. Okay, that's the bottom line. And from looking at this, these R to R waves, we break this thing down even further. We go to the next slide. So, so really, why does the autonomic nervous system matter? Because a normal autonomic nervous system has the ability to up or down regulate sympathetic and parasympathetic tone depending on the needs of the body. And the body can respond to stress as needed and then can relax and repair itself. The repair is a big deal. That's part of the parasympathetic nervous system, which we're going to talk about, which is the green part of this pie here. And for regeneration and healing to take place, we need to have a certain amount of that. Okay? Keep going. So what messes this up? What really messes up this autonomic nervous system? I think Dr. Pompa, you kind of know what uh, disrupts the autonomic nervous system. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, toxins, you know. I mean, obviously, one of the things, diet, uh, stress of any type, physical, chemical, or emotional, simple as that. That's right. So, you know, doctors are always asking me, well, how do I fix that? Well, it's, it's dealing with all the things that you just talked about. It's not just like, you know, one size fits all. It's, it's dealing with, the, with everything you talked about. You've got to unload those toxins. You've got to deal with the stress reduction. You have to do all the things that you're teaching your doctors in, in your training, and that's what improves the heart rate variability. It's not uh, one particular thing. And that, by doing that, uh, let's go to the next one. <laughs> by doing that, this is a very famous saying. Uh, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change. And when you remove all the stressors to the system, then the body has an ability to adapt and be healthy. Nah, this is we say that Dr. Michael on this show continually because <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Adapt or die, right? Yeah, yeah. You remove the interference. The body has the ability to heal and adapt. Fine homeostasis if you remove the interferences, no doubt. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so this is just giving us a window to see as you move remove those interferences that you're improving all the things that we're going to see on this heart rate variability. Let's show, uh, let's show this slide and I'll show just a quick case, just simple, easy, adrenal type case, and, and you can see before and after on this slide. So this is somebody who has, you know, chronic fatigue, they got, you know, they have, um, what are they, 30 years old, and this is their scores. You don't, we don't have to teach you everything right now, but here can, it is, before and after. Uh, Michael, I have to ask Meredith something. Can the people see the PowerPoints? We've got Michael seeing the PowerPoints. I'm just not sure if they can see the PowerPoints. When I talk, I can see them only when I talk. Is that just me? Should be viewable. I'm sharing my screen, so it should be constantly viewable. If not, we'll upload this uh, PowerPoint, this PDF as well, so it'll be viewable um, on the, the podcast site. Perfect. That's all we need. Perfect. 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 We're good. Go ahead. So, so with this first slide, you got a gal. We're going to show you how easy it is to use and to look at these pictures and give you kind of a brief what they mean. But here's a here's somebody who um, has, you know, uh, really their adrenals are kind of uh, needing support. They needed some uh, DHEA, some adaptogens, and we just want to see what the response would be over a month period. So you look at the scores here, and underneath here, it shows you uh, these little red dots. We like to see these little green dots, which means that the scores are really good, and the scale on here, this little indicator needle should be over at 100, but you can see that most of the indicator needles are very low, and it's looking kind of at a lot of things. It's looking at cardiovascular adaptation. That's kind of controlled by certain uh, barrel receptors in the carotid and aorta that control and regulate information to the uh, uh, cardiorespiratory center, and it's just a way to control blood pressure and can send that information to the heart. And you know, at, sometimes people stand up or they're laying down and they get up and they don't get the blood to the brain. And uh, they have um, sometimes that information isn't getting to where it needs to go because they have a little bit of hardening of the arteries and those kind of things, right? So that's kind of just a brief explanation of that first screen. The second one here, where uh, which is the B, um, this, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but the next one's just telling me about how well the autonomic nervous system regulates. The next one tells me about their, um, their um, neurohormonal, their hormonal uh, system, and the, and the last one's the psycho-emotional. So here's this patient we're going to look at in just one sec. Let's just go up. Let's just go up and I'll show it to you. Can you move it up just a touch? Uh, one little more. Go on up. A little more, please. A little more. I think I think it's not going up. It's just kind of bouncing back and forth here. Can we? Huh? Can you move it up a little bit more, please? Somebody there? Yep. I'm on the. Um, I saw that starting screen. Okay. Lots of echoing. All right. Better now. I'm on the um, the before and after heart rate variability. Just that first screen. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay, stop there. So this is just showing that the scores are really low. That's all they got to know right now. Let's go to the next one. 
And this is just showing when you do a test, it tells you how accurate it is now. Uh, Dr. Pop, I don't know if we had that available before, but a little percentage comes up and tells you how accurate that test is. And then we go to the next screen. And this is an icon that comes down and tells you exactly what these different pies mean and what they look like. But I'll just tell you, this yellow is your sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, and the green is your parasympathetic nervous system, and the red is your neurohormonal system, so your hormones that regulate uh, your, your, you know, from, from the, mostly the hypothalamus, pituitary adrenal thyroid access, and that whole regulation there. And we only want a little bit of that. You can see that in this first pot. And you want, this is the perfect balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic tone. And that's kind of what you're aiming for. But a lot of people we know have this. The second one is what? Sympathetic dominant. That's where they've got the gas pedal to the floor and uh, they're, they're producing all these stress hormones that over time can be damaging to the body. Right? Hey, hey, Meredith, I, I have to interrupt there. That was Warren. Uh, he did this on Warren. The, the pedal was to the gas. Let's just say he was in a Lamborghini going, you know, 180 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, that shows it's pretty accurate, right? Hey, right. Do we, uh, can we say somebody else or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my daughter, right? I mean, it's like she she wakes up crabby in the morning, and so he did it on Olivia, and it showed absolute low cortisol. I mean, just like. You know, I mean, everything that could say, you know, you don't wake up very good or your mornings are not jumping, that was her. She was like, oh, my gosh, that is so right on. That is so me. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's, it's really, some, I just did somebody before I walked in the room here, and you can see what time they go to bed at night, and you can see their, their energy over 24 hours. It's, it's absolutely right on. And then this is the parasympathetic. And, you know, I was going to tell you, Dr. Palmer, you know, in a lot of systems that are out there, they think this is really good, and, and so this is green, and this means that they have lots of parasympathetic. That's what you want to see in an athlete, right? But there's another marker on this test that if you see this and that other marker is low, which I'll show you in a minute, that's the adrenal exhaustion. It's the opposite of what uh, is out there in the um, scientific community because they, they're missing pieces of heart rate variability uh, that – give you the bigger picture it, and, and our system has a lot more indices that give you that big picture. Without that you can get, uh, you can think something looks good and it's not. Got it. this, is, this last one, that big red, that's aging. When we see that big red pie here, this is when, this is when people have lots of metabolic problems, psycho-emotional problems, uh, problems with blood pressure issues and things. We want to as we age, this, this, we start losing our autonomic nervous system and we start filling in with this neurohormonal backup system. And our job is to backtrack. And sometimes we have to go through and, and just like in reverse order here, backing up to get people healthy and we're reversing this whole uh, process you see on these pies. Okay, let's keep going. So this gal comes in. Okay, this is a before and after. It's about a month apart, okay? And the stress index is what we look at. How much stress is this person under? And if you look here, can you guys see it? It's pretty hard to see, but I think it's like 463, and normal is 10 to 100. So this person's pretty stressed. After putting her on this program uh, and giving her some good adrenal support and some lifestyle changes, look at the change. She's wow. still in a month. In a month. Can you guys see the numbers on the second one? Mm. In the circle? All right, can you see it? It's dropped considerably. I can't see the numbers, but it's dropped considerably. And so you think oh, yes. that you're... Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. If you're a patient, you're going through a program, and you show them this, and they go, look, you're stressed, and, and this is what you are. They come back a month later, you got them on... Uh, on uh, the, uh, the the programs that you have them on and the stress index has come down considerably and look at the parasympathetic nervous system regeneration and healing is going up right you can see the green there it's come up as opposed to the first one on the left there all the scores are improving 
You go to the autonomic nervous system uh, index over here, balance index, it's really high, it's out of range, it's out of the numbers that it should be. Now you go over and after a month, that's it's not in range yet, but they're going in the right direction. It's improving. You know, what do you think patients think of that? You know, I mean, they, I, they love to see that. They, they usually can see that your work is working for them. It's so right. immediate too. I love how quickly the results. It only takes a few minutes, and you just you get such a quick reading with the device. Exactly. So, so in this case, look, one month of adrenal support with DHA, pregnenolone, and adaptogen decreased the stress index, improved the percentage parasympathetic nervous system, as uh, as shown in the green pie, from 10 to 31 percent. That's huge. Improvement in the autonomic nervous system balance index. So that's the first screen, and the vital force hasn't changed that much. That will come later. Now, I haven't explained this vital force here, but this one down here, that's not found in any other heart rate variability system. That's a very, very valuable uh, tool that tells us how much energy they have to dance back and forth between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And if, you, if it's low, then you don't you may have a good pot. Most heart rate variability systems will show the balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, and it may look good. And they go, wow, this is this is a good balance between the two. But if they have low vital force, they don't have the energy to go back and forth between them. Like so this system is very unique to be able to give us that information. If we go to the next pie, this person's on the same program, this is basically telling us about the HPA access. And without going into a lot of depth right now, we can see that the numbers are going in the right direction. It's hard for you to see on the post test, but uh, the red legend underneath is saying that there's, there's really um, dysregulation in that HPA access, and it's in the second uh, screen here is showing us that it's improved. Without going into too much depth, I'm just going to go through that. Let's go to the next one. Well, how about for those of us who are not doctors who are watching, can you explain a little bit about the HPA axis and why that's important? Yeah, okay. So the HPA axis up in, in the brain is really um, involved in regulation and sending out information. The brain tells its information. Uh, the autonomic nervous system feeds into it and gives it information to regulate all your hormones your thyroid hormones, your adrenal hormones, and your whole endocrine system, not to mention temperature and a lot of other things. The master control system of the body. And a lot of times it gets overloaded. And sometimes even like Dr. Papa says, with inflammation from what, heavy metals, Dr. Papa? Yep. And those kind of things, throw it and dysregulate that whole HPA axis. Yeah, the, 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 heavy metals, the heavy metals we know get in the hypothalamus pituitary, which is the control tower of that whole axis, right? So what he means by it is the, the those two organs, the hypothalamus knows how much hormone is in the system. The pituitary puts it out, tells the thyroid and the adrenals how much to put out. So it's just a balanced system is all it is. Yeah, and it screws up the whole negative feedback loop of that thing when, when you got yep. the heavy metals and, and, and it gets overloaded. Yep messes that up. So we can have a gauge to look at that. The other thing that we like to look at, if you go one step by the next slide, is you know how much metabolic energy does this patient have available? And this screen, you can see this one up at the top, is really a full looking pyramid. That's what an athlete would look like who's not overtrained and has lots of uh, energy. The blue side of the, the pyramid is the parasympathetic, and it's really anabolic, building up and regenerating and, 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 and holding on to energy. And the red side is where we spend that energy when we're in sympathetic dominance. And this tells us, in this particular person, they didn't have much metabolic energy. She said she's fatigued, and she was. And after uh, putting her on a program, we walk over here and we say, well, the first, the first score was 71. The range is 150 to 600. After putting on a program, uh, it went up to 161. It's now at least in range, okay? And it's also telling us uh, she has a little more time to restore. So she does some work and does some exercise. Her, ba her body is able to recover a little bit faster on the second one. 
So wow, been, that's only one month later. That's one month later. Wow. This is going to get more interesting for you. Hang in there, gang. <laughs> this is going to get more interesting. And, and we look at the brain activity, okay? So after being on this adrenal DHA preglenol and adaptogen program and, and doing some other things that we did with this person's lifestyle, gave them healthy fats, right? We always give them healthy fats, MCT and the coconut oil in the morning and, and then those kind of things. Look, improvement in overall brain function. So we're looking here, this little 29 says the range, the total power of this brain is to be between 50 to 100 and it's really low. So uh, the second one, it's almost in range. It brought it up to so improvement in, in, in brain function. And we also look down here, and these aren't real neurotransmitters. They're looking at giving us indications about excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters. And if you look here, GABA is low, dopamine's low. But if you come back on the second one, look what happened after boosting things up. The GAB is now in normal range, the dopamine's in more in, in normal range. It's now in the normal corridor. So GABA is now in the normal corridor. I mean, that's really, uh, it's, it's just nice to be able to see that. Let's go to the next. Oh, yeah, one more thing. She also has, it says brain toxicity here. She still has brain toxicity. What does that mean? Uh, it means that she still needs liver support. She nil, still needs help with maybe phase two liver detoxification or liver drainage or whatever it is that you're going to do with the liver. It's giving us an idea, an indication. So that would be something I would want to do with her in the future. Next. Multiple, multiple brain phases. Multiple brain phases. That's what I'm going The liver is going out and going to get into the hair. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You can't clear those toxins out. They're going to end up up in that noggin. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I'm not going to go into the brain waves right now. Let's go to the next one here for you. Because this is what people, this is, this, <laughs> this is what people what, care about. Yeah, what do, what do people care about? Uh, and it is important, you know, they, they, they're able to see the uh, biolog, biological age versus their actual age. In this particular case, this gal's 30 years old, and she's looking like she's 40 years old. Her biological age is much higher. After a month of treatment, that dropped to 35 years old. So she's still not under her age. But, and she's still over, but she's a lot less. And, and this came from a, a Rush, the Russians took a population of 10,000 healthy people of different ages and with a variety of health conditions and plotted this information on a bell-shaped curve to their age and where, and where optim optimal would be for their age. That's their bell-shaped curve that they're looking at. But it's real patients. They always want to know what this is. They, they, they even walk in the clinic and they say, I want to see what my age is today. It's, they love that. Next. Should we look next? Okay. Can you blow that up just a touch there? Yeah. So this, you know, I'm doing research right now. We can't, we can't say a lot, but we're doing some research with, uh, you know, uh, stage three and four you know, cancer patients, and we're looking at heart rate variability, right? And what we're looking at is this is looking at all these systems. This is a mathematical algorithm from looking at all the rhythms of the body, uh, from respiration, the heart rhythms, and looking at them and how they all work in sync together. And what you can see on this is how organized or disorganized that particular system is. And so without going to too much depth, you look here, level of biorhythm coherence is 13. And at the bottom here, you can click on this icon and it drops and tells you that it's a highly disturbed biorhythm coherence. But after doing, uh, putting on the right lifestyle program, it's in going in the right direction. It says now it's at 50, it's in range. The range is always in the parenthesis here. And now she's becoming more, her system is more organized and, and uh, more ordered, highly ordered is the word. Okay. So what are the biomarkers that the biorhythm coherence is looking at? Well, the biorhythm coherence is looking at coherence between uh, all the systems of the body, all the rhythms of the body. And so it comes from uh, fractal, fractal neural dynamic coding, which is really looking at these repeating patterns that occur in nature, in, our, in, in, in life. And when these things are all out of sync, 
in this mathematical uh, way of looking at things from these scientists, then the body is starting to break down. It's becoming more disorganized. And that's what that number represents. And we want to see it within that range that is in parentheses. And below that, I'm not going to go into too much depth on that. That's telling me what direction the patient's health is going. Yeah, so that, when, we first, when we first did it, the person was going in the wrong direction, negative 20%. And then after treatment and putting her on the right program, it's now uh, a positive 20%. It's going in where we want it. It's, it predicts what's happening over the next week. So before she was going the wrong way, we got her, put her on the right program, and now she's moving in the right direction, kind of a predictor. Should we look next? Mm -hmm. These are just, you know, highly visual. This is kind of looking at um, all the things we've looked at, but in a pie fashion. And what the patient's looking at over here is what's their peak performance of looking at all the things we've been looking at, and she's at 17%. And the blue is what she should be, you know, the average person for her age. The orange is what she is on the, on the, uh, on the one, the pre-test. And then we go over to the post-test, and it's gone from 17% peak performance to 42% peak performance. So your doctor, whoever's working with the patient, has improved their health. They can see it visually. So the improvement in peak performance from, went from 17% to 42 percent. They're just moving in the right direction. A lot of these things are just showing you different ways of visualizing that. Okay? Should we go next? Now, this is what hit home to you, Dr. Papa, when you were looking at your daughter, because you knew what her sleep pattern was, and you know it's kind of interesting, right? And this, is a, this person's the same thing, because at this time at night, as you can see here, this was at, uh, I believe, like it's hard for me to see from at 12 at night, at uh, 10 at night, this should drop. The energy here should drop, and it's not. It means that they're up at night, and then it carries over all the way over to the other side at um, 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Finally, when the person's supposed to get up, they, the energy drops at 6 in the morning. And this is a typical pattern, you know. And uh, so this enables you to look at this, maybe, you know, looking at maybe melatonin and, and actually at night their, their cortisol is spiking. And so I know you use some really uh, great products that you use from Systemic Formula to maybe they, they could take at night. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, the Calm is yeah. one that we utilize for that. Uh, there's another one called Seraphos, uh that we use utilize for that. So. And oftentimes they need some uh, adrenal in the morning. Like you said, I mean, DHEA is, supports the adrenals. GA adrenal um, in the morning supports the adrenals as well. So, you know, those are just some, uh, you know, additions there. Yeah, and that makes sense. And so, th so this would clue you in right away. And obviously we could do some of the tests, the, uh, what is it, the raglans and the different tests that, that you train your doctors to do. And this is just to... Um, enhance that, show, show them visually, you know, what you've been telling them, you know, and, and, and direct that treatment in, the, in, that, in, the, in that direction. Uh, what's the next one? Let's see what we got here. This is real interesting. This, this is what you're going to find very interesting. Okay, let's show the before and after on this one. Can you blow this one? All right. Okay, on this one, the pretest on this side showing that the minerals are low. You know, looking at minerals between, you know, low potassium, low magnesium, low calcium, right? And uh, we put this person on, actually we were having him do uh, soaking in Epsom salt and, and, and doing some, some minerals. And if you look over on the right side, look what happened to the minerals. Uh, potassium, sodium, and calcium came into normal limit levels. Magnesium didn't, though. They need some help still with magnesium. Can you see that? Okay. If we go further and we look at inflammation, this is an inflammation marker. It's high. But after treatment, it's starting to go more, it's starting to come more into balance and go into the low zone. But this is really what's real interesting. This you'll find interesting. Cortisol is high. But look at the post test. We brought it into normal range. DHEA is low. Now it's in normal range. We gave him we gave him a product specifically to work with bringing that up, and it did that within a month. And it also it had because the product had a lot of DHEA in it, and it also had a lot of pregnenolone in it. Look at the pregnenolone low. Now it's in range. So it's 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 you're able to do these targeted programs 
and be able to see the results. I mean, it's amazing. And that's within a month, right? Wow. Now, technology is incredible. The that, that, wow. It just, the technology is so amazing that, you know, these markers can be pulled from heart rate variability. It just, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it's amazing technology. Now, now, I was going to tell you, the fire rate on that test is looking, it looks a little hyper, right? It's on the high side. But after treating it, it dropped more into, more into the normal range. But the thyroid was compensating for that adrenal stuff, right? For the adrenal mm -hmm. uh, DHA dropping. And, and so that's what I see as a compensation. Okay? Should yeah. we go next? The next one is looking at energy centers. So Dr. Karamoff has taken Western medicine and from because we get the frequency spectral analysis, uh, he's been able to equate that to uh, more of the uh, Eastern medicine for those who want to use it. But if you look here, I equate it all to functional medicine. And so when I look at the energy centers up here, uh, the one in the head and the one where the uh, probably the hypothalamus pituitary would be, those are the two lowest. And after we put it on a program, you can see the one, the 26% in the head went up to 47%. And the one where the, the energy center, where the pineal gland and hypothalamus would be, it went up a little bit more. But you can start to equate some of these energy centers uh, with um, those particular endocrine glands that uh, those systems, those energy systems support. So it's those who want to use them. But what I like to do is the Chinese medicine. And if you show me the next screen, I'll just show you briefly that, and then we'll be good. And, and in Chinese medicine, this is looking at the Chinese clock in Chinese medicine. And each one of these uh, represents a specific organ uh, around that clock, a specific meridian, let's say. And red is deficiencies. And the purple, the darker one, means something stuck. It's stagnant energy from a Chinese medicine perspective. We like to equate that to other things like me and you would equate things like stomach, the HCL, and pork acid, and other, you know, other things. Maybe they got H. pylori in there. I don't know. But I kind of think from a functional medicine standpoint, right? And so you, when you do your treatment, you'll be able to see these changes. And without going into too much depth, the bottom legend here is really, it says 483. That's how much energy is going through that meridian. It should be 1,500 to 3,500. And so after treating her, those that the energy going through the, the, the meridians came up, and you can see more green. Can you see more green around there? That means those meridians got balanced. And then what I say is, okay, now you've done some work on this person. You can back, go back and look, and maybe that one area, that stomach meridian is still stuck. So maybe you want to investigate a little bit more and see what's going on with that particular meridian. It gives you a little bit more insight. So for us, those of us who aren't trained in Chinese medicine, this is still very, very valuable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Very, very. And then we got one more. And if you want to go a little bit more in depth on her, um, if you look at the lowest meridian there, you can see First, you look at the wood element, and it says liver 1%. Guess what that means? Remember we said the liver needs support? It does need support. So even from a Chinese medicine perspective, we can see that that liver, we have to do something with that liver. Even looking at it from a Chinese medicine perspective, it's only at 1%. And after treating her, we gave her some things for the liver, and it's starting to go up. Now it's 17%. And the one below that is the water element. See where it says kidney? Kidneys, 2%. That's your adrenals. That's your adrenals. Now it's gone up to 18%. So that's kind of how I use that. There's a lot more ways you can use that, but uh, it also gives you another perspective to look at that. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I think we're good. You know, These are just some other screens, and there's some other ways to do this. And um, the last screen, you go one more screen. And um, there we be. And I could answer some questions that you may have um, yeah. about this technology. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think with some of my doctors, um, you know, they want this. A lot of our doctors have the technology, right? We want to get, you know, more, more of them doing it. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Meredith, maybe they, they can contact you, Meredith, to get in contact, uh, you know, with Michael. So, 
um, that would be a, a good starting point. And, 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 and Dr. Michael, I know you're bringing out, um, you know, the virtual point of this too, where some people can actually wear this and get this at home, and I have my virtual docs out there. Yeah, well, uh, I, I get to excite you a little bit, yeah. So we've been talking about this for a long time. I'm here in Dr. Cowden's uh, clinic, and what we're going to be doing is uh, we have the investment, and I, I want to tweak it even better than it was. I'm, I'm still working on it to make it even better, but we have this in virtual system. It exists at this time, but I, I'm a perfectionist. I want it a little bit uh, more streamlined. You can send this to your patient, put it on their chest, measure what everything I just showed you, send it back to the doctor. We have that, and uh, we also have, uh, which I haven't shown you yet for your doctors, uh, Dr. Bichetti is with me right now, and she uh, has a remote testing system that will blow your mind and, your, for, and will uh, have that available for your doctors for working on the psycho-emotional aspect of health. You haven't seen that yet. It's, it's unbelievably accurate, and you know a lot of people out there are, um, you know, we know that there's a big component to, uh, as far as the psycho-emotional aspect to the physical problems that we see. And right. we have something for you uh, that we've been working on. It's already done, and we'll share that with your doctors and yourself when we get yeah. it. When we need uh, it. We appreciate that. I mean, you know, this, it's just it's advanced. I, you know, so much. And, you know, uh, the old days, and I remember when I was sick, getting on a heart rate variability and just you know looking at myself in massive sympathetic overload. Um, and, of course, I was doing some blood pressures, you know, lying and standing orthostatic blood pressures. And, you know, of course, I could measure it that way. But looking at the depth, um, you know, of what heart rate variability can bring gave me much greater feedback. Today, wow, I mean, it's, it's even further advanced. And, and, Meredith, I'm sure you have some questions because you're looking at that going, I, you know, I've seen it much more than you, Meredith. Yeah, it's incredible. And I remember, Dr. Kessler, I you were giving you gave me the opportunity to actually try out one of your devices in Utah last year. But I maybe some people are watching and they're wondering, well, how does this device even work? They're totally new to heart rate variability, so maybe you can explain how it works, where you know how you kind of get hooked up, and how long it takes, and kind of what the process is like. That's a great question. That should have been an obvious question I should have handled. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. Yeah, it's so simple. You wet the wrist with a little water. We got a little spray bottle. And these little clamps just pop right on both wrists, and you hit the target go, and it takes a couple minutes, depending on how slow the heart rate is. So from, from say three to five minutes, and then you got all this rich information. And uh, there's more in there that I haven't gone over with you. There's some actual therapies that are built into the into the system to balance the autonomic nervous system, and uh, some homework that we give the patient. I know I was supposed to give that to you, <laughs> but there's a breathing program in there that's customized for each patient that actually brings up the parasympathetic nervous system in the vital force. So it brings down that big sympathetic pie, that fight or flight, and it's something they can do every day to improve their health. So there is a lot more in this system, and, the, and it, there's three things that this system measures. One is the time domain between the R to R waves, which is a reflection of the autonomic nervous system. The other, it breaks down the EKG by spectral analysis into um, the individual frequency, uh, frequency, low frequency, high frequency, and very low. That's the hormonal system, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. And the third one was the neural fractal coding that the Russians utilized to get a lot of this information. That's just some of it. Then we have in there the thyroid functional index that came from research on uh, Graves' disease, where they wanted to figure out another way to get that information other than blood on these people that had their, radi their, their thyroid destroyed. And instead of doing blood tests all the time, we also swiped. We didn't swipe, but <laughs> we got the patent. We got the wrong word. But we got the patent on um, intracranial pressure, where we could get a fill for intracranial pressure, so that they have vascular headaches or vascular tension. We have that into the system. And we also have uh, brain toxicity, which is real valuable to your group and your docs because they're looking at the liver and the ability of the body to detoxify. And, and, and that, you know, how many people we know have brain fog and, 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 and toxicity affecting that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's fantastic. So, you know, thank you for that, Michael. And we appreciate you coming on again. And um, like I said, I, I know that. Um, 
you know, we want more and more of our docs to, you know, to get uh, this technology. So thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, you know, for those who want to utilize this system, uh, Dr. Papa has his doctors trained. We've done some uh, education with, with uh, health centers of the future, and in the future, in the future, uh, more and more doctors in, in, that, in that group will have this system and be able to test. Yep. Awesome. Yep. You're exactly right. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Papa. Thank you, Dr. Kessler. What an incredible technology to, to share. So very accurate, too, as well. Just really, really cool. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for joining us. And have a great weekend. And we'll catch you next time. Yeah, Bye. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.